Yes. Have you come with questions? Very well. Very well. Of which did you wish instruction? Yes. Then ask, and I will do my best to answer. Something up? All right. Lay down your weapons, and you shall not be harmed. Why is it that everywhere we go, I end up in a cell? I mean, why did they lock us up? What is this place? It is a training ground for Jedi. What? This ice hole? Yes. It bears the semblance of an academy. But where are all the students? Curious. You've got to be joking. What is a Jedi academy doing out here in the middle of nowhere? It is a place hidden from the galaxy like the Academy on Dantooine. But this place... Oh, Atris, you have been clever. Atris? It's none of your concern. Well, the sooner we're out of here, the better. Two crazy Jedi are more than enough for me. No one told me we were going to be dumped in a nest of Jedi. And what is it about this place that causes you such fear? What do you mean? We're in the middle of a bunch of Jedi. You know how they are. No, I do not. Not in the way you seem to. What? What are you doing? Get out of my head! Stop struggling. Let me follow the current deep, deeper to its source. Stop! Stop! Ah! Ah. With the fear is mingled guilt. It squirms in you like a worm. And the why? Ah. And there is its Heart. You surprise me. I could not feel it before. Your feelings are a powerful shield indeed. Do not worry, Atten. If she is a Jedi, she will forgive. And if she is not, she will not care. You can't tell her. Please. I'm asking you. I don't want her to... Think less of you. I hardly think that's possible. Still, there is no shame in what you ask. We all wage war with the past, and it leaves its scars. I will not speak of yours, Atten, but there is a price for such things. What? What price? There are those who wage war and those who follow them. You are a crude thing, murderer, but you have your uses. You know how important this woman we travel with is. Even one such as you can feel it. You will serve her until I release you. And if I refuse? You will not. If you do, then my silence will be broken. And then, Atten, you will be broken. You fear the Jedi, and rightly so. If Atris learns of your choices, you will never leave this place. But whatever fear you hold of the Jedi, know that if you disobey me, that my punishment will make you beg for the death that has long hounded you. Wipe the fear from your mind. You will not find blind obedience a difficult master. You chose it once. You will learn to embrace it again. I don't know how you became such a manipulative witch, but why a vicious old scowl like yourself would even bother with me is a bigger mystery. No game of Dejaric can be won without pawns, and this may prove to be a very long game. You are a slippery one. Your thoughts difficult for even one such as I to read. I suspect the self-loathing that squirms within you gives you a curious strength. Your spirit, as diseased as it is, refuses to allow you to give up, no matter what threats you face and whatever wreckage you leave behind you. I feel you have crossed our path for a reason. Perhaps even you, at the right moment, may be able to turn aside disaster. If so, your potential is not yet spent. Fine. I'll be your pawn. But I still think you've got the wrong man. Perhaps. 
But someone has to fly the ship, and the Force is a hard thing to predict. You have crossed our path for a reason. Our path brought us here for a reason. And now I know why. The past is here, and it must be met before the future can be set in motion. Uh, more Jedi speak. Care to explain? No. I've wasted enough time with you. Sleep, murderer, and be silent. I need no distractions. A critical moment approaches. I did not expect to see you again after the day of your sentencing. I thought you had taken the Exile's path, wandering the galaxy. Yet you have returned. Why? Your ship? Ah, the Ebon Hawk. It is not your ship. Unless you are admitting to the destruction of the Paragus mining facility. Ah, an accident. Something beyond your control. You have not changed. Acting instead of thinking. Putting yourself before the galaxy, before the Jedi. Do you know what you have done? No, your crime is much more than that. Without the fuel from Paragus, Citadel Station cannot maintain its orbit. It will crash into the planet and its destruction will echo across 20 other worlds. Telos was a test to see if the Republic could mount a restoration effort on the Outer Rim. When it fails, the Republic will not finance another. The other Rim worlds, devastated by the Sith, will remain graveyard worlds, devoid of life. And that is the magnitude of your crime. So you still hold to your flawed convictions. If you think to anger me, you are wrong. How is it that you are not content to confine your ruin to yourself? You must spread it to others wherever you go. Ruin yourself with your actions if you will, but when your actions bring harm to others, then you must answer for it. The Sith? What do you mean? You speak truly. You have encountered the Sith. I can feel the scars on you. And you encountered them on Paragus. But what would they want there? They can't have been looking for you. There are no more Jedi, except I. Like you, they turned from the Order. And now only I remain. If these Sith attacked you, they will soon realize their mistake. And if you escaped, they most likely let you go to see if you would lead them here. Whatever force they can bring to bear, it will matter not. If they face a true Jedi, they shall fall. You offer your aid after turning your back on me, on the Council. The Jedi is not something you embrace out of fear. The commitment is stronger than that, something you never seem to understand. Perhaps. But if you help me, it cannot be done from here. There are others in the galaxy who may help us against a Sith threat. 
If you can find them, gain their trust. Perhaps our defences shall be stronger for it. Take your ship, seek them out. If you find them, encourage them to gather on Dantuin. From there we can call a council and see what can be done. Then I shall send you on your way. It is now time for you to depart. We shall remove her, mistress. Come with us. Are you all right, mistress? The exile reminded me of something. I had forgotten. Forgive me, mistress, but I must ask. The exile, I've never seen another affect you so strongly. Was she important to you once? We all have our heroes. And when we watch them fall, we die inside. She made a choice once, and I did not. The day we judged her, I stood in the chamber, and she was... She was so right. She was so certain of it. I doubted myself, but not now. She will never make me doubt myself again. But now, now I am tired. I must meditate. Of course, mistress. I will tell the others you are not to be disturbed. And please, do not exhaust yourself. We can attend to matters here. Why have you approached me? You will find them in the main irrigation channel room, in the northern part of the plateau interior. The particle emitters there that once governed the flow of water to Telos can double as force cages. You shall not be challenged. As I have said, you will find them in the irrigation room, in the northern part of the complex. They were caged for their safety, until we could determine your intent, Exile. Atris cautioned us against your tactics, fearing that your allies would create a distraction. Your companions gave us little trouble, however. The male could have presented some challenge if he had resisted, but he chose not to. He has had some Ichani training. He masks it well, but when you are in danger... His mask dropped into a stance we know well. I do not know. The Ichani forms are known to be taught to military special forces throughout the galaxy. If the source is a mystery to you, perhaps you should ask him. It would be wise to know those you travel with. Your ship is stored in the hangar. Atris has given you permission to leave this place, and permission to return if you remain in her service. You may ask, the mistress, what of her? She is meditating, and she does not wish to be disturbed. Your presence here has troubled her, and I hope you do not choose to trouble her further. She leads us. As she rebuilds Telos, she rebuilds the Order, and through them, the galaxy. We serve the Jedi. We do not question them. Yet... Atris has told us that the work here at Telos, 
may pay for similar efforts in many worlds along the rim that were destroyed when the Jedi turned on each other. She has said the Jedi Order needs such a foundation if it is to rebuild. She faults the teaching of many of the Jedi Masters as the spark of the Jedi Civil War. Atris has said that if Revan and Malak had been properly instructed in the ways of the Jedi, they never would have fallen, and nor would you, Exile. That is unknown to me. I have never observed Atris to teach Jedi, nor would I wish to. Atris has chosen instead to focus her efforts on galactic recovery. Once the galaxy breathes again, disciples will come. You may ask. This was once a mighty irrigation center for Telos. It survived the orbital bombardment of the Sith, though the inhabitants did not. Ancient irrigation channels still lie beneath the surface of Telos, waiting to be used again for the reconstruction efforts controlled from this facility. Shortly before the destruction of Dantooine by the forces of the traitor Jedi Malik, Atrus had many Jedi artifacts and knowledge transported here secretly. Even the Sith prefer life prey to scavenging a corpse. She thought that a world already savaged by the Sith would not prove a target a second time. It was a place where the artifacts and the teachings of the Jedi could be kept safely if the Sith could not be turned aside. The Jedi Council sensed it, Master Vrook, Master Vandar, but it was too late to do much except make arrangements for evacuation. It was a dark day for the Order. Many on Dantooine did not survive, Jedi or not. Atris would not speak for many days after the attack, and we feared our mistress was lost to us. In time, she regained her voice and her strength. She brought the artifacts and the teachings of the Jedi here and has kept them safe. Yes, many relics from Dantooine, some which predate even the destruction of Ossus. She was not able to save all, but she saved enough. She was able to bring them here before the Academy's destruction. It was a fortunate thing. She was not able to save everything. Viewing the relics is not allowed without Atris's permission. There is truth in what you say. Yet many such artifacts are sealed away in Atris's chambers. But if you wish to see a few of them, speak to the last of the handmaidens. She has seen some of these objects and has an interest in such things. Yes, she should be in the training chamber to the north and west of here. She constantly seeks to improve herself so that she may no longer be ranked last among us. Because she is easily distracted by matters that do not concern her or her duty. Such distractions weaken her and she knows this. I will not speak of them. Ask her yourself if it matters to you. You may ask. We serve the Jedi, and we watch. Atris is the only Jedi here, this is true, but the Mistress will bring others in time. You are no Jedi. Atris has made that clear. When you went to war, you gave up the mantle of the Jedi and became something else. I assume you meant no insult. It is forbidden for us to become Jedi. Even if we possessed the awareness of the galaxy that the Jedi possess, we are here because we are not Jedi. That is our purpose. We have taken an oath to never follow the teachings of the Jedi, only to watch those of the Order and carry out Atris's will should it be necessary. Atris believes the new Jedi Order that shall arise here will need to be guarded and watched by those not touched by the Force. She thinks it will give balance. Atris is the only Jedi here, this is true, but the Mistress will bring others in time. It is possible, but if so, your road of atonement shall be a long one. You may add. We share the same father, and we all bear the face of our mother. 
It is not unusual for the Achani of the same parents to be born so as to be indistinguishable to outsiders. As I have said, it is not unusual for the Achani. If you seek to raise anger, one cannot take back an action, and often apologizing for it only compounds the... You may... The exile, the one Atris warned us about. I am the last of the handmaidens. This is correct. I train so that one day that will no longer be true. I know a little of them, yes. Much Jedi knowledge is stored here. Secrets of their teachings, combat styles, and discipline. The Jedi relics are kept by Atris. Within the walls of her meditation chamber, entry is forbidden. Atris has made her orders on the matter clear. Entry to her meditation chamber is forbidden. To even ask shows you... Most come from Dantooine, brought here before the academy there was destroyed by Malak. Not all relics were able to be saved, for there was not time to rescue them all. I am not permitted to speak of such things, and it is not your concern. I... I have seen a few of them. Yes, they were not always in Atris's meditation chamber. There were many relics, among them small cubes, warm to the touch, each containing their own light. When held, some would speak, ask strange questions. Yes, their questions were... Confusing. They seemed to think I was someone else. Someone's student. I had thought perhaps I had damaged them in some way, but I could not think of what I had done. You may ask. She said, you betrayed the Jedi by going to war when it was forbidden to you. You turned on your masters, your teachings, and yourself. That is not all, she says. She says you know nothing of loyalty to any cause except your own animal instincts. And she told us why you fell to the dark side. Atris says that you fell to the dark side in the Mandalorian Wars when you gave in to your lust for battle. Once you tasted war, you could not give it up. Atris says, when the Dark Lord Revan returned to the Republic, you did not march with him because you had fallen so far, you could no longer feel the Force. So it was a matter of choice then. If Atris has erred in her evaluation of your motivations, it might be best to inform her. I believe that is the extent of her expressed feelings toward you. There are variations at times, but all rise from the same foundation. Yes, it is difficult sometimes for others to truly speak their heart or listen to it. The words often prove difficult, or they do not come at all. Without having seen you and Atris fight, I cannot say. Battle is a pure form of expression. It is heart and discipline, reduced to movement and motion. Then her expressed feelings will have to suffice. You may ask. I honor the face of my mother. It is not something spoken of in the company of others. I do not wish to discuss it. If there is something else you wish to ask, you may do so. There is no need to apologize. You were merely remarking on something that you saw. There is no wrong in that. 
It is not a sensitive subject, but a subject that requires trust. There is no such trust between you and I, and such trust takes time. You may ask. Before you go, Exile, a question for you, if I may ask it. You have touched the Force. What does it feel like? Please, I wish to know. I see. Thank you, Exile. I appreciate you sharing your knowledge with me. Why have you approached? You may. Did you find what you came for? There was something from your past here, something unresolved. I feel we did not come to this place by chance. You were led here. This woman who resides here, she did something to you once, something that hangs upon you still. I see it now. The act has left its marks. Be warned. Unresolved events from our past can create wounds in the present and the future. And, more importantly, they can distract you, weaken you. It could prove fatal against the enemies we face. There is a Jedi here, perhaps, in that you are correct. Yet there are no students, and this woman, this Atris, surrounds herself with those who cannot feel the Force. Curious. Plans are fragile things, and life often dashes expectations to the ground. Perhaps students will come to her in time. For now, she is surrounded by those who cannot feel the Force. Yes, her servants are not Jedi. Their minds are walls, trained to resist tricks of the mind. This discipline blinds them to the Force as well, even if they were Force-sensitive. Invade the mind of another? It is not something done carelessly, or when there is nothing to be gained. Very well. Let us depart. <sighs> He's only sleeping. It seems the journey here has fatigued him. I am sorry, General. I must have lost consciousness in the crash. I'm fine, General. Even power has been restored to my arm. What is this place? Where are we? This must be where I had detected the energy readings before, and the drain to the restoration shields. This room, this place... It looks part of a huge polar irrigation system, possibly planet-wide, like the one on Coruscant. I had been told by the Republic that it was not in use. I am, General. If you wish, I may travel with you or join you at the ship. Very well, General.
General? I'm fine, General. This place looks part of a...
You have returned. Why? I would welcome a chance to instruct you. I have been anxious to teach you many principles of combat ever since you invaded this place. Oh yes. We train extensively in various combat styles, and we have not had another target for some time. You may prove a pleasant diversion. Very well. Follow me, and we shall see if you have the endurance to learn the most basic of our teachings. Before we begin, are you familiar with the Chani traditions? All duels between us shall be without armor of any kind. There shall be no restrictions upon our movements or upon yours. Your feet are not to leave the training mat during the battle. If they do, you will lose. Also, this is not a fight to the death. Restrain your instincts when we fight, and we shall do the same. The fight will be with hands and feet only. No stimulants, shields, weapons, or other items. Also, do not call upon any Jedi techniques during our contest. If you do, then the battle will be over. In turn, I will not use our higher forms, for this is only an opening battle between us, a test of each other's strength. Then let us begin. Succeeded. If you wish, you may challenge us again, and we will progress to more advanced movements. Seek one of us out when you wish to fight, and we shall honor your request. Have you returned to fight again? Very well. I shall honor your request. Our next battle will be using the higher forms among the Ichani. You may choose hands and feet, or whatever melee weapon you wish, but use no other items or Jedi techniques. Then let us begin.
You have fallen. Very well. Our you seek one of us. Have you returned to fight? Very our you then. Succeeded. If you wish, you may challenge us again, and we will progress to more advanced movements. Seek one of us out when you wish. Have you returned to fight again? Very well. Our next battle shall be free of restriction on weapons and items. In turn, I will spare none of our forms again. Then let us begin. of melee combat. You surprise me. Have you returned to fight again? There is nothing more that we can teach you from such contests. Such battle would only be for battle's sake. If that is what you wish, then we shall honor it. We shall see how you fight against a group of us. We shall take use whatever item, weapon, then let Fallen. Have you returned to fight again? Very well. Our next battle in turn. Then let us. of melee combat. You surprise me. There is nothing more that we can teach you from such contests. Such battle would only be for battle's sake.
Have you returned to fight? There is. If that is what we shall use, whatever. Then let. Fallen. Oh. <laughs> 